A sad day at the Ellis Chalmers plant as the last tractor comes off the assembly line. This 6070, serial number 1972, and 71 years of production of the greatest tractors ever made. Many of us wonder what could have been. What did the future of Alice Chalmers tractors look like? A farm in western Missouri gives us an answer. I'm Ethan Daler. I'm the new owner of the 8095 Alice's. Uh, these was going to be the first production uh, 200 PTL horsepower tractors. Um, they was going to be a new line, the 9000 series, and they was going to start around 225 horsepower. Uh, they're they're nice, neat old tractors. A lot of differences between the 8000 series and these. Uh, the front axles were heavier front ends with uh, dual steering wheels or cylinders on it and this tractor has a 8.3 Cummins in it. They were supposed to originally have Komatsu's. They added the, the extension to the front frame and they included the batteries up front to make room for the 4W305 transmission in it. This clutch housing down here, housing's a lot bigger than what 8,000 would have been. And also the rear tires were 20.842s, which were, would have been the biggest at the time for row crop tractors. And on the rear, rear end, it would have had more of a 70-80 style rear end in it with the wide final drives compared to what the uh, late 8070s would have had, which would have been like the 8050s. More cooling capacity and wider hood, longer hood with the frame extension. Uh, these swing outside panels to access closer to the back end. A lot of items were already in production with the 8000 series. Cab was it was the same as 8000. Fuel tanks. You can tell it's substantially bigger than you know the the 8070. Yeah. How did you acquire them? Uh. In 2006, uh, I mean 2016, I bought a disc from uh, the Hunleys out there that owned them, and uh, 
been kind of talking to them about them ever since. So we finally finally got a deal made up, and he was wanting them to go to, to go to somebody young like me, and just uh, kind of fortunate that was able to. Uh, everything just kind of fell in line that I could buy them. So hopefully uh, here at some point I'll uh, here pretty soon the other one will be coming in. So we'll have the one with the Komatsu too. Yeah, this this is the engine that should have been in the 8095s. It's a Komatsu, either a 663 cubic inch or 673. Uh, would have came out to about 11 liters. I mean, it was it was sad from what some of the test engineers that would start a start start loading any gear. They had a torque backup that was unreal. And how many horsepower did it give up? This engine, it this engine would go all the way to 300 horse. The, um, they was planning on going up to 300 horsepower with the 9000 series. So it would have been about the same size as a 305 was. You're gonna use it for work? Yeah, it's it's gonna be a workhorse. It's can't let them set because that's that's what they've been doing the last three years from what Brian said, and I uh, I need to use them because they gotta make a payment somehow. So. Do you know how they were saved? Uh. Back when they were shutting down the test farm when Deutz bought out Alice, uh, the main test engineer up there called up Brian and said, you guys got to come up here and see what we got. And I, from what he said, there was just tons and tons of parts and tractors and uh, pieces that was just laying around. And they just started pointing out what they wanted. and these tractors was basically sitting there without engines in them and they they got these and took them back and I mean started farming with them when they put Deutz engines in them and they finally converted them back to uh, liquid cooled here in the last 10 years. Now you were telling me what was the one piece at the proving grounds that they wanted but Alice wouldn't give up? They had a 18 speed transmission that was in production, was going to be for 1986 production that would have been heavy enough to take the uh, stress that these tractors would have been, or the torque that these tractors would have been putting out. And the test engineer just would not let that go. They, they begged and begged for it and they just couldn't get it from them. So that's... Uh, one of the biggest pieces of Alice history that we've lost is probably that 18-speed transmission because it was it was something nobody else would have had for a tractor that size. So, do you think these would have been popular if they would have been produced? Well, with the 80s, as the 80s go, the bigger the better. So, <laughs> they people like big stuff back then, and it's like today: the bigger it's gotten, the more they they really want it so I'd say they might have might have hit pretty good if if the uh, if you had good crop, crop prices back then. Now if having the 8095 wasn't cool enough Ethan also has another piece of experimental Alice equipment on the farm. Okay we also got another experimental it's a R50 would have been an N4 when they they was designing it uh, or named it as. Uh, Dad bought this brand new in 1986 and we've had it ever since. He was, they, they made a run of seven combines in 86 for a pre-production uh, pre run to get, get in the farmer's hands and test them. And uh, I think from what I know, it's the only one of the seven that's still, still going. And, it ran 140 acres of corn last year without a much flaw. So uh, I've completely went through the cab and everything on it. Uh, the steps are about the only thing that's still a uh, prototype on it. it. It's the only one that I know of with fold out steps. 
And in the brochures, you can see all, all three of the combines that they have in the brochures, they have those steps. But uh, when they went into production, they went to something, just a little handle that came out. And also the bin, bin extension, when it went back up to the test farm or the combine plant in uh, 87 to get reworked, they changed the bin extensions. Um, they originally was like a N or R7 style extension with pins that you just pull out and they changed them to production style uh, bolt, bolt together extensions. You said your dad was actually featured in the, the brochure for this? Yes, yeah, so dad's, dad's in the brochure. It's got a little write up on him. Uh, the combine was cutting beans in February. And that's, I mean, it's just kind of been a family heirloom and it's going to stay on the farm as long as I'm, I'm around. So uh, it's just, a, it's a good combine. It's, it's still got a lot of life left in it. So we're going to use it as long as we can before it gets retired and hopefully get it in a museum maybe someday. Cause I mean, a serial number on it's uh, not even R50, it's an N4. 1065 is the number on it, so. We'd like to thank Ethan and his dad for taking the time to show us their collection of Alice Iron, of which the 8095 and R50 were only a small part of. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.